There is a supernatural world that surrounds us. Sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. You hear stories about this, so much more, right here on Supernatural Confrontations. So recently, the Pope has declared that the Vatican is going to uh, tell us uh, what apparitions or what supernatural events are sanctioned by the church. But I have a problem with that, and we're going to be talking about what happened well over 100 years ago in Fatima, Portugal. We created two films on this, so buckle up, folks. This is going to be intense. We'll get into it, but first a word from our trusted sponsor. Gold has been on an unstoppable run. It has gone up more than 81% in the last five years and almost 20% in the last 12 months. Folks, it's happening. Central banks are ditching the dollar and U.S. Treasuries are buying more gold. The good news, it is predicted to go up more. UBS even said it might go up to $5,000 an ounce. Noble Gold Investments phone has been ringing off the hook. Everyone wants to protect their retirement with gold, and folks, you can do the same. Noble Gold Investments can help you secure some gold to protect your future. From day one, you work with the same dedicated all-American experts. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced investor, Noble Gold Investments will make sure you get all the help you need. And this month, Noble Gold Investments will give you a free quarter ounce gold standard coin if you open a qualified account. Folks, go to noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. We've invested, and I am really glad that we did. So this happened to me in, in uh, 2017. Peggy was getting ready to go uh, to church. I was already dressed, and she was in the bathroom putting on her makeup or whatever. And um, all of a sudden, the Lord gave me one word. Now, this is the way he works with me, and he works with people differently, and that's just how he is. But he just gave me one word. It was Fatima. And I just went, I just went, oh, my gosh, it's 2017. And this is the 100-year anniversary of the Fatima apparitions in Portugal. Now, I had been a student of those apparitions since I was a child and heard about it. But when I became a Christian and born again and spirit-filled, I began a deep dive and I began to read a, a different view of what happened at Fatima. And I walked into the bathroom, I said, we're going to Portugal. Well, the rest is history. We received a very substantial donation from people that we had never met and that paid for the entire trip. Then we had a friend of ours, uh, Miguel, over in Portugal who knew everybody. And so one phone call, and I was on, on the phone with Francisco Carrera, who has appeared not only in the Fatima films, but in, in our Crop Circle film, in our On the Trail of a Nephilim film. I mean, Francisco and I are, are, are good buddies, and my hat is always off to him, and he's just an amazing, amazing man, amazing researcher. He's head of Exopolitics Portugal. So Francisco was able to line up all these researchers who would look into the Fatima apparitions and come up with a completely different viewpoint, completely different paradigm than what we see uh, in the official version. Now, before I get into this, people have a right to believe what they want to believe. I'm not going to disparage anyone's belief. Um, millions of people go to Fatima every single year believing that apparition that appeared was the Virgin Mary. I don't believe that. And that's, that's my paradigm. But people have a right to believe what they want to believe. We're not going to disparage anyone's viewpoint. The bottom line is, when, when the Pope comes up and, and states something like this, that the Catholic Church, which, by the way, is the largest Christian denomination on the planet. I think it's like 1.2 billion, but whatever. I digress. But the bottom line is when he makes a statement like that, well, evangelicals have a completely different view of Mary. We don't look at her that she was um, assumed into heaven, the Feast of the Assumption. Uh, she fades from the biblical prophetic narrative basically right after the book of Acts. We never hear from her again. Do I think part of Luke's gospel was from Mary? I do, but that's, you can't really prove that, but that's what I believe. Um, 
But she fades. And all of a sudden, you know, 400 years, roughly 400 years after the fact, then she becomes the so-called queen of heaven. And what I take umbrage with is that the focus uh, for a lot of Catholics is on Mary and not Jesus. And that's, that's a huge gulf here. I respect Mary. She's the God bearer. I get that. I totally get that. If people want to believe in Mary or pray to Mary, that's their business. People have a right to do that. Again, we're not going to disparage anyone's belief. But this culminated in 1917, over 100 years ago now. Um, and what, what I find interesting, that apparition that appeared was not Mary the Bible, in my opinion, even though Catholics and people, of students of Fatima will say, of course it was, but I don't believe it was. And this is why we created two films on this. And the fact that we've, we've got two films on the Fatima apparitions, um, and let me just walk through this for some people. This is the thumbnail sketch. You need to rent these videos. You can rent them for $4.99 by going to streaming.lamarzuli.net. What are you waiting for? Don't do it now. Wait till I'm done the show and then go. Because I'm only going to talk for maybe 10, 15 minutes here. And you need to do a deep dive. You need to arm yourself and understand what's going on. And now I'm beginning to understand why the Lord redirected my steps and had me go to Fatima. Maybe for a time such as this. So 1917, there are three children, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta. They are illiterate. Uh, Lucy is 10, Francisco is 9, and Jacinta is 7. These are very young children. They're illiterate, and they are shepherds. They're out in the field, in the moors of Fatima, tending sheep. All of a sudden, an entity appears over this tree. The entity was wearing a skirt that came right below the knees. Women in 1917 wore dresses all the way down to the tops of their shoes. So right off the bat, you've got something which isn't, isn't jibing. Mary of the Bible would not appear with legs showing. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. There's also a fourth witness we get into this in our second film uh, on the Fatima series. And the, the, the fourth witness, which never uh, was got all the attention that the other three got, saw a... Um, an androgynous being around that same tree several weeks prior. And that entity was laughing and singing and using mental telepathy, beckoning this woman to come, the fourth witness, to come uh, to him or her. And the witness didn't do it. Her name was Carolyn. And when she looked at the sheep, the sheep were frozen. They were like paralyzed. When she looks back at the entity, the entity, this little blonde-haired androgynous being, was no longer there. It was floating above the treetops. So we've got all sorts of funky stuff happening here. Now that's been dressed up as the angel of the Lord. Again, I'm not buying that for a second. The problem I have is this. That supernatural event has been sanctioned by the Catholic Church. But what if it wasn't Mary of the Bible? What if it was a harbinger of deception, which of course is the title of the film. In that film, we show a never-before-released picture that was taken on the moors of Fatima on October 13th, the day of the so-called miracle of the sun. And it's not the sun leaving its place in the universe and descending the earth. It's something else completely different. And what happened was, and we know this from the eyewitnesses, the parish priest, Father Fiera, had the presence of mind to, wit to interview these witnesses and handwrite, write down what they were saying. So it had been raining all morning. 70,000 people are amassed in the moors of Fatima, awaiting some sort of a sign from this entity. And I'm not, I'm not going to call it Mary. I'm going to call it an entity. So it had been raining all day. All of a sudden, it stops raining. The clouds part. There's the sun. Get this. All of a sudden, a bunch of clouds come into the and, and obscure the sun once again. Out of that cloud comes a dull silver disc. Now, what does that sound like to you? It doesn't sound like the sun. It certainly doesn't sound anything like Mary of the Bible. A dull silver disc in 1917? This is what I believe happened. And I realize some people will, will really take umbrage with that. 
And you can believe what you want to believe. I believe it was a UFO event. Why? Because people saw a dull silver disc that was spinning and that came down. It did this three times. It would spin and come down to the crowd and then go back up into the cloud. It did this three times. We know the clouds are extremely important. So all that, and I, you know, folks, I don't have time to get into the whole thing. This is why we created the films. You need to sit there and watch them. Streaming.lamarzuli.net, what are you waiting for? You know, I command you to go watch the films because you need to you need to understand the times that we're living in. And I don't have time to unpack the whole thing. I just don't. I just don't. Four dollars and ninety nine cents streaming that You can watch them both for, you know, for under 10 bucks. It's, it's a great deal. Why are we lowering the price? So more people can watch them. This is the days of deception. These are the days of the coming great deception. So here's the deal. Evangelicals look at this event, people like me that have studied it from, from all different sides and say, wait a minute, this is not Mary the Bible, this is something else. There was aerial phenomenon. In 1917, there was no verbiage, nothing in the lexicon that stated UFO flying saucer. That wouldn't happen until 1947. This is 1917. I looked up and saw a dull silver disc. What does that sound like to you? And these records... These handwritten records by Father Fiera are kept in the sanctuary at Fatima. And this is our guidebook to what happened way back in 1917. I'll wrap it up by saying this. In my opinion, it was a UFO event. I'll just put this guy right down here. It was a UFO event. It was not Mary the Bible. And it deceived many, many people and continues to do so today. So with all due respect to the Pope and to Catholics everywhere, you know, who are checking the fact checkers, as it were? Who decides what apparition is real and what apparition isn't? What about people like me? Why, um, I'm not included. No one's contacted me. And I, I have a show, Supernatural Confrontations. I, I've been immersed in the supernatural since I was a kid, for crying out loud. And what is our guidebook to the supernatural? And how do we ascertain and discern what we are looking at? It's right here in the pages of this book so easily to be deceived. The second film, Strange Phenomena, there's two films on Fatima, okay? Uh, Harbinger of Deception is the first one, Strange Phenomena is the second one. I'll just give you a little taste. Cars exploded, spontaneously combusted, windshields exploded, fires started, people's clothes just dried, it had been raining all day, people fainted, people had burns on their faces like radiation burns. All this happened at Fatima. This does not sound like a benevolent, wonderful um, apparition. This is something else. This is something else. And I'll close by saying this, that the Fatima apparitions, we have, uh, and it's in the second film, Strange Phenomenon, we have the only picture taken by Joshua Benolio, the official photographer, the King of Portugal, now, 1917 had become a republic, but Joshua Benolio was the king's photographer. He was there in the field at Portugal on the moors of Fatima in 1917, October 13th. And he took, I think, 12 pictures. One of those pictures shows a disc-like object hovering directly over the apparition site. That's all I'll tell you. That's in the second film. You need to see that. Not many people in America have even looked at that picture. It was censored in Portugal. Why? Because it tells a completely different story. So all this to say that we need to be careful um, who's on this, this committee or this, this group of men that come together and decide what is real and what isn't real. Is it possible, is it possible that when the Great Deception actually happens and we get mile-wide craft over the, the cities of the earth, is it possible that people in the Vatican will say, well, these space brothers were our progenitors? I don't know. And that, that's a loaded question. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. So we are in a really strange window of time. Fatima 1 and Fatima 2. Streaming.lamarzulli.net, or if you want to buy the DVDs, lamarzulli.com. I will be at the Prophecy Watchers Conference. Uh, the end of June. Can't wait for that. Always great to see the folks. Um, we got a raffle coming up here, and we're going to tell you about that a little bit later. Don't forget our monthly news magazine. We've got some 
Great articles on a monthly basis. Uh, Mondo Gonzalez writes for it. Jeff Van Hatton writes for it. Fritz Zimmerman writes for it. Sonda Allison. Vicki Joy Anderson, the author of um, They Only Come Out at Night. Karen Wilkinson, the author of Stolen Seed. Folks, you want to check that out. It's, I think, a little over two bucks a month to get it. It comes as a PDF in an email. So you can just print it out, download it, watch it on your phone, watch it on, you know, read it on your phone, read it on your computer. So check it out, L.A. Marzulli. Dot com. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, the supernatural world is real, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. Thanks for watching. Marcel's own words, it was something that he'd never seen before, something from another world. In our opinion, Marcel was a patsy. Just verbal directions, we know what's about it. Well, his father was telling the truth. He dug in the eye and he said, it really happened, and he held his hand up just like this. If they had six fingers, not five. He said they looked quite a bit like us. Do you think your grandfather was a patsy? A hundred percent. Of the cover-up by the U.S. military. Do you believe our government has made contact with intelligent extraterrestrials? I can't discuss in public setting. Do we have the bodies of the pilots? A biologics came to some of these recoveries. He deliberately obfuscated and they lied to the American people. When the Pentagon decided to lie about what happened at Roswell. Because he's standing six feet away, this will be about three and a half or tall. She said the nurses who, you, who were there during the crash, they're now at a convent. The first book that Randall wrote, and he said to Jess, he said, that's not fiction. But for everybody, yeah, I mean, it's just a human thing. It's a, a worldwide changing, be life-changing for everybody. It was certainly not a weather balloon and not something from this earth.